All right, so uh, thanks everyone for coming to my presentation. I'm gonna be talking about the recent NAR settlement and hopefully if you're here or you're watching this later on, uh, you'll get some useful information that you can use yourself if you're buying or selling or if you know someone that's buying or selling a home, you can share this information with them. Oops. Okay, cool. So a little bit about me. Uh, I'm Sam Thompson. I'm the broker and owner of the Thompson Real Estate Team. I've had my real estate license since 2014. I have a degree in political science with a minor in philosophy. And I have two uh, kids, my daughter Kezia, she's five years old, and my son Bodhi, he's 16 months. I like playing basketball, riding motorcycles, and playing chess. So a bit of a hybrid athlete, biker, nerd guy. Um, so that's that's pretty much who I am. All right, so um, you may have heard recently in the media that there's some changes coming to the real estate industry. And what that's about is a lawsuit, specifically it's the Sitzer Burnett lawsuit, or you may have heard the NAR lawsuit. And essentially what happened is home sellers in numerous states filed a class action lawsuit that claimed that the real estate industry at large, specifically targeted at the National Association of Realtors and some other large brokerages, that they were engaging in some antitrust practices, meaning that there was price fixing of commissions. And, and this, this was the essence of the lawsuit. They were just saying that um, it's, it's an unfair monopolization that's happening within the real estate industry surrounding compensation and commission amounts and so forth. So in order to understand that, you've got to understand how real estate agents make money. So in many areas, including the capital region, it's typically the home seller that pays the real estate commission. And that can actually be any amount. It's negotiable. Oftentimes you might see somewhere, you know, seven, six, five percent. But the point is, is that the seller would usually pay the, the commission and that commission would get split between the listing agent who the seller hires to list their home for sale and the buyer agent who brings a ready, willing, and able buyer to that listed property, produces in an offer, which becomes a signed contract that eventually moves to a closing table. And once it gets to the closing table and we have a closing, the seller pays their listing agent and they also pay the buyer agent a commission. So that's, that's typically how in many areas, not every area, but in many areas, that's how real estate agents earn commissions. So sellers had concerns about this. And they were asking questions like, wait a minute, why why are we paying for buyer agents? Uh, because they're really not representing us. They're representing the buyer. So sellers were feeling like they were obligated to offer a commission to buyer agents. And that's really the, the crux of the lawsuit. And so, um, you know, this was this was the issue that sellers were having. And then, you know, buyer agents or excuse me listing agents would say things like well if you don't offer a co-broke your house is going to sit on the market nobody's going to show your house so in a way sellers were feeling like they were being strong-armed to offer compensation to buyer agents because if they didn't no one would buy their house right so now what um in essence the lawsuit uh came to a settlement. They didn't you know, take it all the way in court. They decided to settle between the attorneys. And so there's some rule changes that came into effect on August 17th. So I believe that was last Saturday. So specifically, um, what will change is uh, two major things to note. Number one is that offers of compensation for buyer agents cannot be uh, communicated on the multiple listing service. So the multiple listing service is a platform that real estate agents across the nation use. There are different ones in different areas. We use the Flex MLS or even the New York State MLS, multiple listing service in our area. Um, but the way things worked is that listing agents would put the co-broke or the commission being offered to the buyer agent on the MLS. So the, the result of the settlement of this lawsuit was that that can no longer happen. 
they can't offer compensation. Listing agents can't offer compensation on the multiple listing service. Um, the second part, which is important, is that uh, buyer agents are now required to enter into written agreements with prospective home buyers before showing them homes. So up until August 17th, the way it would work is if you called and you wanted to go see a house that was for sale, that real estate agent didn't have to have anything in writing with you and they could just show you the house and then figure out the you know compensation later. So this, this lawsuit, <clears throat> the settlement that they agreed to, they really, uh, I, I think, wanted compensation to be the forefront of the conversation. So, you know, when you're going to look at buying a house, a real estate agent is going to tell you, they're supposed to tell you now, hey, here's the services that I'm providing to you. Here's how much I'm going to charge. Here's who's paying me. Here's when they're paying me. And here's a written agreement. So let's, you know, make an agreement right now. And then we can start looking at houses. Okay. So how does this apply to you? What can you actually do with this information? Um, so number one, as a consumer, you might be hearing a lot of things on the media and the news from your neighbor, people at work uh, about how this is gonna impact the real estate industry. Just understand that nobody actually knows 100% for sure. It's, it's pretty much speculative. And as time goes on, we're gonna start to see, okay, does this have, you know, create downward pressure on home prices? How does this change the real estate industry and maybe the services that real estate agents offer and what they charge for those services. Um, so nobody knows for sure how things are going to pan out, number one. And then another thing uh, that you can uh, keep in mind is specifically as a buyer, you're going to be presented with these agreements before you go and look at a house. So a real estate agent hopefully won't try to take advantage of you by telling you, hey, the only way you can see this house is by signing an exclusive buyer agency agreement. No, there are other options. There's non-exclusive buyer agency agreements. Some real estate agents may have one-time showing agreements that you can sign. So just keep in mind as a consumer that, you know, when you're going and shopping homes, if you just want to go see a house, you, you don't, you know, have to sign like a long-term contract with someone that you haven't met or maybe just met for the first time. There are options and you should, you know, make them know that you're aware of those options, bring them up to them. So thirdly, uh, buyers may have to pay. So in, in all likelihood, uh, sellers are gonna continue to offer co-brokes by and large in our area, but there may be situations where sellers say, I'm not paying a buyer agent. And if, if that is the case and you are a buyer and you have signed an agreement with a buyer agent, you're going to have to figure out how are we gonna compensate our real estate agent. That can be done in a few different ways. It can be done um, out of pocket, you know, uh, at, at the closing table. It can typically be wrapped into your mortgage as long as the seller is willing to work with you a little bit on that. Um, but just keep in mind that, you know, you, you may have to pay for that representation if the seller is not offering a co-broke. So another thing to look for, um, just look for integrity. Whoever you're going to work with, whoever's going to show you houses or help you sell your house, the, the most important thing in my opinion is that you find someone that has integrity, someone that's trustworthy. Ask people that you know, hey, do you know anyone that's in real estate that I can work with, that I can trust? Check out Google reviews. So important. See what people are saying about that individual. Um, so that, that would be another recommendation. And then lastly, just again, asking the right questions. So specific to sellers, you know, if uh, you're meeting with a listing agent and showing your house to them because you want to put it on the market, just ask them, hey, you know, who's paying for what? Um, do I have to compensate the buyer agent? Do you think that I should? If so, why? Um, so that would be my suggestion. So the key takeaways, right? Uh, ask questions. Ask real estate professionals. What services are you providing? How much are you being paid for it? When are you being paid for it? Who's paying you? very important questions to ask. And at this time, real estate agents nationally are kind of shaken up a little bit and should be prepared to answer these questions. And they should respond essentially with what their value proposition is. So, you know, what is it exactly that you're being compensated for? And, you know, what, what is it that you offer that is that valuable? What is your value proposition? Um, 
And yeah, basically compensation, just, just talk about compensation and make sure you understand again, who's paying who, when, and why. So if you need any help with buying or selling, uh, feel free to give me a call. So I'm Sam Thompson, broker owner of the Thompson Real Estate Team. Our mission is to empower our community with the knowledge and expertise to make informed and intelligent real estate decisions. And if you or someone you know is interested in uh, buying or selling real estate, we do offer referrals. So we pay a $500 referral for successful uh, you know, referrals that end up closing. This is my contact information and I appreciate you guys coming. <laughs> Anybody have any questions?